Hi there, thank you for joining us again in our series of continuing conversations around the COVID-19 pandemic. I am Dr. Mahendra Karpin, the Head of Medical Services and Cardiology at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. Remember, if you have questions, you may send us a WhatsApp message to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. As usual, you see me starting off this program. I am wearing my mask, covering both my nose and mouth, but I'm gonna take it off now using the straps around my ears so we could continue this conversation and you can understand me a little better. So today we are continuing to take questions from our listeners and viewers and this is a very common one I would want to spend some time to try and clarify again. I believe in one of our previous conversations we looked at it, but if it's coming up again as a concern. So I wanted to spend the time to make sure that we understand what the answers to this question is. So here is the question from someone just like yourself. I am not smelling or tasting food. I test it positive. How long will this last? And what can I do to help this? Very important question. And it's important because we are increasingly recognizing what new symptoms and new associations with this COVID-19 pandemic brings to us on a daily basis. So just to recap, the common COVID-19 symptoms as we know them today are some fundamental ones that we recognize from the beginning and then some new ones. So the normal associated symptoms are things like chills, repeated shaking with chills, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, loss of taste, or smell, fever, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing. Fever by far is the most common of the lot, but loss of taste and smell is also quite common in this group of patients. Loss of taste and smell commonly coexist. And this is so because the area of the brain that is responsible for interpreting what you smell and what you taste, they're very closely positioned. They're like neighbors on the, in the brain. So what affects one is very likely to affect the other. These commonly coexist and taste of smooth, uh, sorry, taste of food often depends on the smell of the food. 80% of COVID-19 patients have some complaint of loss of taste or smell. May not be complete loss of taste or complete loss of smell, but there is some effect on either one or both of them. And it can be the first or only symptom in about 25%, that's one in four of the positive group. So if you imagine that we have, you know, let's say 4,500 positive cases now in Guyana, it is likely that about 1,100 persons would have had loss of taste or loss of smell in this population. So that's a scary number to think of. And in fact, a number of persons who would have called or messaged, um, this would have been their only symptom and this is what they are concerned about. Oftentimes, they would have had what they 
thought was oh, a slight flu or a little cold and then a couple days later that's when they recognize that they can't taste or smell as before. So let us look how common this really is and as I mentioned to you before the presence of fever is the commonest of all symptoms. Then there is dry cough which represents about 80% of um, patients who have symptoms. Shortness of breath is present in about just over half or 55% of persons. And loss of smell is seen in about one in five persons or 25%. Other things which may be fairly common are like headache, coughing up blood, diarrhea, fatigue, sore throat, and runny nose. These are common COVID-19 co um, symptoms and signs that one needs to recognize. So in order to analyze loss of smell, what we call anosmia, we need to recognize that there are several causes. And even without COVID, one can experience some level or some disturbance in the sense of smell. So there may be partial or permanent or complete loss of smell. And the commonest reason whenever you have a cold or the flu is congestion. When you have stuffiness or um, a fullness or runny nose, you often have congestion that can involve the nerve endings in the nose that are responsible for picking up smell. So when those nerve endings are swollen and affected by any infection or inflammatory process, their function becomes affected. And so therefore we have either partial or complete effect or um, dysfunction of our sense of smell. The more concerning one, which can last longer, is when there is an actual inflammatory process affecting the olfactory nerve. The olfactory nerve is the nerve that is responsible for the sense of smell. And this can be temporary or prolonged, depending on the level of inflammation and if there's any actual permanent damage that is done. People can test their smell quite easily and we use things that are non-toxic or non-pungent to the nose. Common things that you can find around like a cup of coffee you may try to smell that and see if you recognize in the smell. If you don't like coffee you could try your favorite tea and of course you can cut an orange, a lime or a lemon and see if you can recognize that smell. So that is how we are looking at the sense of smell. The sense of taste is a very complex one, a little bit more complex than the sense of smell. And if you look at the human tongue, the tip of the tongue is where you taste sweet. Right behind that, on both sides, is where we experience our salty recognition. That's where we recognize salty taste. Right behind that is where, on the both sides of the tongue, we recognize the sour taste. And way down to the back of the tongue, we are able to use that zone of the tongue to recognize bitter taste. And you could try this. Um, put something sweet to the back of the tongue and see if you really recognize that it's sweet or put something sour on the tip of the tongue and see if you're recognizing that as being sour. You may not get the full appreciation if it's on the tip of the tongue as if you if you were to then move it further back along the tongue to find that zone where you're able to recognize um, sour taste even more. In the brain the areas that recognize and interpret your smell and your taste are very closely positioned. The area that is called the olfactory cortex, that is what recognizes and interprets the sense of smell. 
and the sense of taste is recognized by an area called the gustatory cortex and that those areas are very closely lined and they're also very closely positioned to the auditory cortex which looks at or which helps us to interpret the sound that we hear. So it's all about where we interpret these various sensations and it's all a centrally controlled position in the brain that helps us to identify one versus the other. So the specific question that was posed by this viewer or listener is how long would they be expected to have the loss of taste and smell? So how long would it take for me to get back my taste and smell? Well, let us look at for a regular cold, this is usually less than a week, usually three to seven days. And in a large study done by the Center for Disease Control, or the CDC, they looked at 274 patients. And the median duration where there was loss of taste or smell, this lasted for about eight days. So that's just over one week, one day over a week. In a European study, they showed eight to nine days for this lasting. Luckily, both and all the evidence around the world suggests that about 98% of persons would recover their sense of taste and smell by day 28. So that's less than a month or just about a month before you would expect to recover both sense of taste and smell. And this is for the majority of patients, 98% of all COVID positive patients who would have had some effect on their sense of taste or sense of smell. What can you do? Is there anything that you can do to speed up this process? Is there anything I can use to get back taste and smell earlier? This is the specific question that was posed by someone. Well, the answer is perhaps not as encouraging as we would like because there is no specific treatment. You may consider boosting up your immune system during this time by eating the right foods, taking the right supplements. The things that we usually advocate are things like high dose vitamin C, zinc, and of course vitamin D3 if you can find those. Um, those are have been shown to help the immune system and perhaps this can help to speed up the recovery from loss of smell, loss of taste. If this persists beyond the usual or the expected one month or 28 day period, then one should seek medical help, medical advice and perhaps there is uh, an approach to then start an investigation to see if there's any more serious or underlying conditions that we might have missed or that COVID would have unmasked during this time. There's something that is interesting that is emerging which is known as smell training and just like how we categorize primary colors, scientists have now started to categorize primary smells that humans are supposed to recognize based on exposure and experience. And there are seven primary smells that have been proposed. And these can be categorized as one, musky, and you can look at things like perfumes and aftershave for that. Putrid or rotten, um, you can use you know, recognize that uh, in rotten eggs, for example, and the specific gas of hydrogen sulfide is the culprit here. Pungent odor, such as vinegar. Camphorous, we have an example like in mothballs. Ethereal, which is like dry cleaning fluid. Floral, which an example of that is like roses or also floral scents that you may recognize in, in air fresheners. Uh, 
and of course pepperminty which one can recognize in mint gum so this is a newer more emerging you know more modern field of study that people are starting to recognize and tailor therapy to actually train persons to regain their sense of smell there's no definitive evidence to suggest that it works or it doesn't work but there's some encouraging results that are coming out to show that perhaps there is some benefit to this approach so i hope this answers the question about the loss of smell and taste during the COVID-19 pandemic. And remember, if you have any questions for us, remember to send WhatsApp messages to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.